Dave here, how are you? Now the sound is going to be a little bit echoey because as I just put a post there, I've had a microphone failure, the one that I normally have up here. Um, so I'm using the webcams uh, microphone. I hope it's okay. Let me know if you're getting any, uh, any, any buzz or feedback, whatever. The only problem is when I go over to the bandsaw or the table saw, I'm just going to have to stay a little bit quiet. Uh, sound and video is okay? Cool. Let me have a look down here. I'll have to work it out during the week. Video and audio good. Excellent. Thank you for that. You're very kind. Uh, today on the show, I'm going to offer some alternatives to thin rip jigs. Now you can buy these things and that's fine. You know, if you want to buy a thin rip jig, you can do that. But I can get you out of strife by using one of two different methods. And one method, which is a mag jig, my uh, feather board. I just turn it around the other way and I'll demonstrate that. Lock it down. A lot of people don't have a table saw that's got the capacity that to uh, put something that's magnet magnetable. Is, is that such a word? Um, so they don't have a cast iron top. They'll have an alloy top that magnets just don't work on. So I have another another system for that. Now to start off with, sound is a bit echoey, but otherwise fine. Excellent. Not as good as last week. Okay, I understand that. This stupid thing, like I. I'm going to have to muck around with this a little bit. It's giving me some little funny signals there. I'll, I'll muck around with it during the week. We'll see if we can get it sorted. Thank you very much for waiting for me. We'll probably finish up at the right time as well. I, John, I did say magnetable. What do you reckon? Is that a word for the week? I used to do word of the week and uh, it was a word that Vicky and I would make up when we'd go shopping or driving along. It gets a bit boring, you know. We've spent a long time living together so we do these little games and uh, we come up with stupid words and sometimes I put them out there as though it was a real word and uh, anyway our bats are batteries are brand new full charge all that kind of stuff yeah it's just um, this program isn't recognizing them at the moment what I'll do is I'll use them later on in one of my video cameras and we'll see how that travels anyway, enough enough about the technical dramas I'm hoping you all watched Cole Hosey Gifkin's jig uh, doing his live stream. He does a live stream an hour before me and he tries to finish it off so that he doesn't overlap with mine, but he could have gone a little bit longer today. Uh, him and Pam, they're both getting into it and they also have their share of headaches with technology. Magnetable is only a word since you invented it. Is sense a word? I like that one, Russell. <laughs> it is now. All right, so we're going to show you how to do rips this thin. Now these can be dangerous if you're doing on a table saw, not as dangerous on a band saw because there's no real chance of anything being thrown back at you. But the thing is, as you're pushing a large piece of timber through to rip off a thin piece to drop off the side, you may end, sorry, the, the, the thin piece against the fence, you may start pushing the large piece back against the start jamming and stuff up your next piece. So what I'm going to do is show you how to do a repeatable thin rip and without having to jam your fingers and everything in between the blade and the fence. It really is worthwhile. It's a, it's a smart thing to do. Uh, right, now I'm using a piece of hoop pine and you'll see I've got a face mark and an edge mark on it. Those face marks remind me of music from when I was a kid, like a bass clef foremost. All right. Now I'm going to put it in the stand and bench. I just want to get it nicely planed. One good thing about my bench, you'll notice I've done a little bit of a promo for it during the week on Facebook as well throughout Australia. Um, that's in the lead up to Christmas. I've had a lot of orders coming into Christmas. I've got to get some more sheet supply in. I've got to get more legs uh, produced by John. Um, it's getting quite busy and I'm happy about that. So if you want a bench prior to Christmas from me, Get your orders in really quick because they are moving fast. They're probably the most affordable bench out there. Is that enough of a wrap for myself? The thing I like about this, and I'm going to switch over to the other camera as well. There we go. So I'll lift this up just a little bit. This thing here, the apron, this is the big thing that sets my bench apart from a lot of the other just plain tops that are produced. The cushion strip and also the T-track 
our other big features to be able to have all this stuff hanging around him. So I'm going to plane this first because one of the things we need to do is plane the edge first, get it nice and straight because it's very hard to plane it. I'll put it over to this camera, a nice finish like that after it comes off the saw. You can do it, but uh, it's nice to have that. If you're wanting to use it to join, on, not join it back to the board that it came from, but you understand what I mean? It, to get it to join back, to glue it onto a surface, you want that face, this face, planed up first. Check your phone after the show. I will, I will, Peter, thank you. All right, so I have this, these I've already dressed up, so I know they're dead straight. The thing is to get it parallel right at the beginning. So I'll put my clamp on here. And we've done all this stuff on sharpening just recently. And a lot of my planes I've realized this morning when I was getting this set up aren't sharp, except for my Ryder 62 low angle. This is a really, really nice plane. Someone asked me during the week about these planes and it is a really nice plane. It's got a uh, mouth that I can open up and close so it uh, resists tearing a whole lot better. Uh, I also use this joint fence. It's magnetic, goes onto the side like so. And I push it along and you can see it keeps everything at 90 degrees. You'll remember that my plane that I built, this one, which who didn't even make it to the finalists in the Australian Wood Review magazine. Anyway, I was a little bit annoyed. <laughs> um, anyway, what was their call? Anyway, the blade is chipped on this, so I've got to sharpen that. I might do that kind of stuff next week. We did chisel sharpening the last few weeks. I might throw a couple of plane blades um, over the pro edge and see how we go there. Now, this thing doesn't have as much... Uh, variance in getting the angle. You really got to get the angle on the blade perfect. You got to get that at 90 degrees. Otherwise, you can see in here, there's not much room for the blade to move left and right to adjust it like this, to get the angle perfect on the bottom. And that's the big thing. So I'll show you how well it cuts. I'll do a pass like so. That's pretty nice, isn't it? So that works well. I'll go to Carl Cam. You can watch it from up there. Where are we? Carl Cam and chat. There it is. There's the bench and the plane. You like that? I do. And how about we do <laughs> one more? One more from the front. And again, I'm hoping the sound is coming through okay for you. There we go. The dog was in here this morning and she's running around picking all these things up. Uh, I don't know what she's going to do with them. She, I don't know what's going through her tiny mind anyway. All right, over to the bandsaw and I'll show you this system I have for doing these. Oh, before I do, I'll show you how good the rip fences are. If you can get a rip fence for a hand plane, you'll be able to get nice square. It's a joint fence, I should say. Do you like that? Right the way through. Okay. Uh, no, I'm not British. No, Australian. All right, turn this camera around this way. Actually, one of the good things about the dog not being in here is that she would possibly grab a hold of the lead for the camera and shoot off with it. Let's see how we are here. Uh, that one, that one, and that one. Let's spin this around a little. Think. Yeah, about there, that looks pretty good. Now, piece of uh, Melmine. That's all you really need and a couple of clamps. Now I'm using a piece of melamine that's already got the plastic edge on. This is a, a leftover 
from when I was uh, making some drawers and things. And the next thing we need, a couple of clamps. Now the clamps need to have, I've lost them. No, there they are. Just a standard F clamp is good enough for this. But I'm using these ones. The reason we want an F style clamp or this kind of stuff is so that we can get up underneath this thing. Under here is a whole lot of kind of honeycombing, reinforcing bars to support this cast iron section. So we want this to be able to go up underneath. Don't try and grab it on the edge because that's just going to be a waste of time. It's not going to work. It'll slip and be a problem for you. So I'm going to put those over the back for a second. I'm going to use two of them. And I'm going to bring this over. And you can see I've already done a cut with this. Now I want, let me just put a little mark on there. I'll do it in pencil, or pen, whatever I've got here. There we go. I'll do it for this camera here. So I'm going to put a little mark there. That's how wide I want the piece. All right. Now I'm going to release the fence. Actually, I'm going to go to the whole camera like this one. I noticed last week that uh, it wasn't as good having the, the other little camera up in the corner, picture in picture. So I'm going to release the fence and just push it along slowly until I get to there. And then I'm going to push back slowly on the fence until the kerf the outside of the, so this blade, this, this tooth, this tooth, and this tooth, they're on this side. So they're, they're doing this kind of thing. I don't know if you can see that or not. Anyway, one tooth faces one way, the next tooth faces the other way. This cuts slightly wider than the thickness of the blade so that it doesn't jam. If it was straight, a zero kerf, well, it possibly would cut, but if there was any movement in the timber, like there's, remember, there's a lot of energy stored up in wood as the tree was growing. And you might want to close in around that. So hence, that's, it's like that. So now I've got the fence set to have my piece that I'm going to cut is going to be on the outside. Rather, and I'll show you how dodgy it would be the other way. Rather, then rather than do that, if I'm doing that, there's all that chance of saying uh, of this pushing back against it. Especially if I had a feather board here, like stuck down. So this is safer. There's no way. It's, it's more. It's more safer. It's safer on the table saw. The table saw is the thing that basically it's going to be big time safe. The band saw, it's still going to be safer, but not as much of an issue. See, the, the bandsaw or the blade is only going straight down. There's no force towards me at all. With the bandsaw, the blade is turning, sorry, with the table saw, the blade is turning this direction, do it with the other hand, uh, <laughs> and any jamming, and it's going to fly this back at you big time. So it's nice to have a nice big piece ready to go. And so then what we do is we get the piece of melamine, just put that there for the moment, I'm going to put the melamine on there. I did cut the melamine sheet to the same width, very close to the same width, and put this here, bring that up against it, bring it in as close to the blade as possible, because that's going to give me this distance for my referencing. The back of the uh, sheet is going to be just fine on its own. I'll lift it straight up. And then a clamp on the front without moving it. That's the secret, isn't it? Oh, I moved it. All right. I'm going to put the clamps on and just leave them hang without any tension on them at this stage, without any pressure. One on either side or both sides. I'm going to go back to the block of wood that we'll be cutting. I'm going to have a quick read. Uh, Sound is great, shaving set. Good evening, Dave. Da -da -da -da. Did you mean something? Could be. Is the sound still coming through, even when I'm way over here? This is this is a fair way. I'm 
I'm around eight feet away from the camera. I went into panic mode. Now see just here, that's, that's something we don't want to happen. We don't want, I'll bring the camera around here. We don't want a gap there. We want this pushed back like so, nice and tight. When I've got it there like that, This particular clamp is a double action. It's got a, um, it's it's got a, a speedy way of clamping on to start, and then it's a conventional left clamp after that. I'll come around to the other side. I'll show you the clamp after I've done this part because they're quite nice. And you may may think this is a bit of mucking around, but you know. It's worth it, and why we don't really need to be in, in a rush to do this kind of stuff. Okay, so I've got it to a situation where it's not jamming anywhere. I'm going to check the back so it's not going to jam there either. And this is one of the reasons why it was important. That's good. That's why it was important, to, <coughs> pardon me, to ensure that this is parallel right the way through. Okay, I'm going to get some eye muffs, pop them on, and turn the dust extractor on. Now, I, it will make a little bit of noise, not a lot. So it's your call as to whether or not you want to turn the sound down. That's a whistle from the dust extractor. I'll tip it up just a little bit. I'm going to lower the lower the guide down. There we go. Unlock it. All right. Go to the other camera. Yeah, so that was uh, that's pretty easy. That's the result. And as I said, I've got my rip blade on there, my resaw blade. It's too aggressive for this, but I, you know, I didn't want to really muck around changing the blades just for a demonstration. So that's that. Again, I want to take this back being nice and flat because at the moment I'll show you it, it ain't flat <laughs> look at that okay we're gonna clean that up with the hand plane it's it's all about staying safe you know <laughs> these things are really handy I like to keep a hold of them I've got a friend who uh, when he was learning how to use a table saw we were only kids at the time and his father said to him count these things, count to 10, before you go to a machine. I think it's a good idea, good idea. Quick coffee, how are we doing for time? <sighs> Pretty good. Now I don't need the eye muffs on for a hand plane, obviously not. <laughs> Let's see how we go with this. I'm gonna move my coffee out of the way. It is cutting, see that? It's just all the, what bandsaw would you, probably a 3 8 maybe a, a, a 12, maybe, maybe a 12 mil, 12 by maybe 6 TPI, that might work. This is a nice plane. It's not my other ones, but. They're all blunt at the moment, so I'm not saying they're nice planes if they're blunt. 
I could have put it over the jointer, but not everyone's fortunate enough to have a jointer. But most people can afford to have a hand plane. There we go, she's starting to slither out now. Stay there, stay there. It's only held on by magnets. That's better. Got it. Okay. I'm down to where I want it to be. Aren't that lovely? All right. Yes, so Cole's there. If, uh, if you get a chance, jump in an hour earlier than my show goes. You know where my show, show happens. So if you jump in, um, I, sorry, I'm just reading down the side here. Is there something that's happened to John that I'm not aware of? If anyone could put a comment up, uh, that'd be great. I'm hoping he's well. Um, I understand the current situation with his kidney and everything, but I was just wondering if something else had happened. It's been in my prayers for quite a while. Surgery brings in comfort, even... Okay, all right. I was aware of all of that. So there we go. We've got another starting point. And I was talking about coal. I get distracted easily. Coal is the dovetail master. You need to watch what he's doing. He is putting out... Thanks, Derek. He's doing a series of videos and there is no cost. Normally, Cole would say to you, come up to my place. I've got a studio there, workshop. I'll give you a one-on-one -on -one lesson or maybe one-on-two and uh, he takes you through the whole thing. Now, if you're the kind of person that actually needs to have someone hold your hand, and that, there's no shame in that, going through, doing all this stuff, making a box from start to finish using the jig that he's got, which is absolutely fantastic. I, there's no easier jig. <laughs> um, do it. Go, go, up, go to his website and book a, book a lesson. But he's doing this live show pardon me he's taking you through what's the kind of jigs that he does have what's in the box he, pardon me he calls that and then also he's taking you through a live demonstration costs you nothing so do it i've got a link to gifkin's jig in the description so if you go below this video there'll be a video description and it'll just have a little short blurb about what's on today click the show more button and there'll be items in there that I've been using on the show today or different companies that support the channel and also Coles in there as well. I think he's almost all the way down at the bottom. I do that so you read through the whole lot of the other, <laughs> other things to get to the sugar at the end of the list. Anyway, we're going to go over to the table saw and have a bit of a bit of fun with that and it's slightly, slightly different and a couple of tips for that situation that are going to save you some headaches as well. So I'll move this camera. Bear with me. Bring this around to about there. I'm going to check the camera around there. Before I do, I'll grab these clamps off here. I'm going to use a different uh, piece of melamine. I'll show you about these clamps to start. These things have got three actions on them. I like these a lot and they're powerful clamps. So the first thing is you've got on the top here, you've got this bar, this little point here. I can slide. To wherever I want. And then we've got this thing here that brings it up and then we give it the business on the clamp, on the screw clamp. These are great clamps. 
All right, release, and down she comes. How easy is that? All right, going to the other camera, and the reason I'm using this is because I can get in underneath all of that webbing and reinforcing underneath the, uh, the cast iron top. Go back to this one. There we go. I think that image is okay. Cool. Now, before I do any of this part, it's always a good idea to put the guards on. Move that out of the way there, out of the way. And this one. Take it off. And you might want to have a look in down there while I'm doing this. I don't know if I can raise this up high enough for you to see what happens inside my table saw. It might be getting there. My guard. Lock that down into there. Lock that in. It's not going anywhere. And then I'll put this back in. I love making my own inserts. There's a saw at the moment that I like. It's basically the one after this. The only thing is that you can't put an insert that's this thick. It's only about that thick up at the top here. But there's an aluminium uh, insert that you can buy to put in there and you raise the blade up through it and it cuts its way through the aluminium. So it's a zero insert plate for it. And that works all right. Okay, so I've got the blade up. Let's pull that down like so. And I'll put the dust hose on it. They're all gonna fall on the floor. Here we go. Crash, bang. Lucky you didn't see that. And this one goes in up the top here. And I've got a clamp on there. I'll spin that up so you can see. So this is my overhead dust collection point. And I use this little clamp so that the blast gate doesn't pull itself closed. Just through the suction. So I'll put that there. And down here, I'll put the other one on the back. I don't know if you can see that or not. And I'll lift this up. All right, next thing. I'm going to bring the camera back over here a bit further. I'm going to check on the monitor, see what's happening, because I can't see anything there. Raise it up a little bit. That might work. Back to the monitor to see what's going on. Uh, sounds pretty bad in that area. Volume, Michael. Uh, well, the volume is not going to be great. What I can do is I'm going to spin the camera around. And is the volume any better now? I'm actually facing the camera. All right. Get my piece of timber. A bit of thin ripping. And this time, instead of having it go all the way past, I don't want to do that. I want to just have it so it's referencing off the fence only. The bandsaw, as I say, is not as aggressive. So I want to have a rip that is around there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my rip fence all the way to zero. And I can see, oh, you can't really see this, can you? On this side, it says I'm on zero. Let me bring this camera around. This is live, guys, so I apologize for the fact that uh, you probably won't see everything as it's happening. This is one way to work out your thickness. So I've got the fence back to zero, which is hard up against my ripsaw blade. Okay. I know that my blade has got a 3.2 millimeter kerf. So what I can do is I can now measure the width of the piece of timber that I've got just by referencing. I can drop that down against there, bring the fence back to it, and now. I see that I've got 127 millimeters to this side of the kerf. So if I want a 1 8 or a 3 millimeter rip on this side, I'm going to have 3 plus 3.2, which is the thickness of the kerf, 6.2 millimeters. I'm going to take off that there. 
push it down here so you can see it again, hopefully. Checking on it. On the monitor, yep. Okay, so 6.2. Now I'm not good enough to do 6.2, but I'm gonna say, all right, well, it's six millimeters plus a bit from 27. So I'm gonna bring this down from 127 down to 120.8. Well, I'm gonna try anyway, I'm gonna move that out of the way. I reckon that's about it. I'm gonna lock it there. If I wanted to, I could bring it back on. I probably should do. I'm gonna bring it back to there. And that's gonna allow me some planing activity to get rid of the kerf marks from the blade, from the from the saw blade. And that should work all right. Now then I need to just have a quick check and move that to there. I can put this here and I can see looking over the top. But that's pretty good. That's going to give me my 1.8, basically three millimeters. So the next thing to do, bring that back again. I haven't finished with you yet. I'm going to bring this up to there. And again, I cut this to size to work nicely for me. Important, you lock the fence off. Now, these ones will work fine as I'm putting them on. Too far. I'll show you in a second what I'm doing. All right, lower this down if it will. I think that's going to be okay for what I want to talk about. Now, I need to move this across a little bit, so it's touching this. There, lovely. Tighten that clamp up whilst I've got this pushing against there. Okay, tighten that up. Now, I don't want this to do any twisting as I'm going through, so I need another clamp here. Now, I don't want to put a clamp on that and the angle that's holding my rail on. If I do that, I'm going to run the risk of sliding this rail and the angle, the steel angle that holds it onto the cast iron top. I'm going to run the risk of lifting that because I can get a truckload of pressure on those clamps, more than the bolts can withstand. If I do that, what's going to happen is I'd possibly lift my cast iron wing on this side of the table saw it might start lifting like that because these two bolts are going to start lifting it. The other thing is, if I lift, move that out of the way, if I lift this at all, well then this is not going to be at 90 degrees to the table anymore. Only a little bit, but it's going to lift it a little bit out of the way and that's going to be a problem. So I don't want to do that. So I'm going to use what's called a deep throat clamp. These things have got a much larger reach. So again, I want to get underneath there, and before I put this on, I need to make sure that the table saw's blade is at the height that I want, because once I put this in, it's not going to allow me to move the, the wheel anymore. Tightening, tightening, tightening. Now, I've still got very good access to my switch. Uh, but no more access to the height adjust. I'm going to check that we're parallel again, because if we're not, that's going to be an issue. And the other thing that is I'm going to show you why we've done this. So there's going to be two more cuts. I can drop this. I'm going to open up the dust port down here to the underneath, to the table saw, close the round table off, close that one off, close that one off, and have a look where we are there. Uh, good, I'm glad to see that my uh, moderators are 
big time doing stuff for you. That's great. Thank you. That's what they're there for. All right. Now, again, it may be a little bit of noise. Shouldn't be too much. So let's see how we're going to turn the dust extractor on. This may all seem basic to a lot of people, and it probably is, but there's always going to be that one person out there that might be able to take advantage of what I'm talking about. I'm going to use the push block on this side. Notice my finger is going to be totally safe away from everything. That's a whole lot cleaner than the one out of the bandsaw. Now, the next thing you're going to do is turn that dust extractor off for a second because it's a lot of interference noise. They're great clamps, David. I love them. I absolutely love them. Now, I'm not going to play in this one because, you know, I could for demonstration purposes stretch the show out a little bit longer um, but we might muck around with that in a minute but now here's where the jig this really comes to play I'm going to drop that in there and then I'm going to push the timber up against where it was release the fence and push that back unlock it now I'm exactly the same width as this one and we're going to check that in a second after I do this cut all right I'm off song again. Size. See that? That's the safe way to do it. Let me come around the other side with that piece of timber. Can you see any dust? <laughs> Ain't no dust. I'll turn this camera around the other way. You can't see what I'm doing at the moment, but I'm lucky. Kentucky. Ah. <laughs> uh, Something worked, something worked well for me. I'm going to switch the camera around to hit. There, I'll drop that down a touch. Zoe's workshop sign is my indicator for me. There we go, top of that sign, everything's good. Life is good. Now the other thing I was going to show you, well, I'll show you, I'll show you in a second. I'll show you in a second. Um, I want to put the plane over these again, but how, look, how good is that? It works really, really well. And it's repeatability, accurate, and uh, safe. That's the big thing. It is safe. Those skinny little things, you can get a skinny little uh, guide or, sorry, push stick, but then at this height, you're going to get into a situation where it's going to rock around. So it's not good. Okay, so you want some more planing. All right, well, I'll put this back in this bench in the face, like so, like so. And let's see if I can get the turner number five. You know that I love these guys. I had Stephen Wallbank dropped up here yesterday. He said, Dave, they look like they're brand new. And they do too, don't they? Now, I know this isn't very sharp. Just wanna make sure I haven't got too much coming off. Let's see how it goes. Pretty blunt. See how I'm struggling pushing it there? The 
surface, that's just that little bit too blunt. It's not that I'm taking a big shaving off. So put that to the side. I'd love to be using this one because it does such a beautiful cut, but I don't know if you can see it. Let's have a look. Can you see on the blade, there's a couple of nicks right in the middle. I do have to keep the dust down for Vicky's quilting. See, this is actually Vicky's workshop, not mine. So she lets me work here on the Sundays to do this show. And then the rest of the time, this is a quilting studio. <laughs> she wishes. Um, use the type of tips in some of my acrylic works. Okay, good. So I'll go back to using this with the jointer fence. The magnetic one on the low angle from Axminster Tools. Come on. Again, it wanted to come off. Oh, such foreign shape is coming off. That got it. You can use that for toilet paper. Uh, she leases me the space. Is that it, Tippo? Yeah, possibly. That is so fine. You can actually see through it. I think. I can't see. No, I'm talking rubbish. <laughs> That's lovely. I'm going to flip it over and do the other side. And the good thing about running it through the saw off that fence as well is that it will... Um, let me think. It's going to keep the reference side parallel to the face or the outside that we're cutting. So it's always, always, always just going to be so nice. Now, what would you use these for? Well, say I've got some plywood and not this thick, obviously. I could make some uh, veneers to go across the edge, just instead of using the plastic tape, the blue one. So I could glue this on and then give it a plane, a very, very fine plane, maybe a sand on the outside. We've got a nice, nice finish. This is hoop pine, if anyone's curious. And, 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 I'll plane this. I got lost there for a second. I'll show you some tips in a second about this plane. Going to show you some tips about the plane. With these things, I do like the plane mark. Uh, this little clamp here locks everything in place. This is basically the lever cap, but instead of a lever, it's got a, a brass thread and screw. These blades have no backing iron because look at the thickness of that. That is a good Four, 4.5 millimeters thick. So I'm guessing in the Imperial Talk, that's around 3 sixteenths of an inch thick. Maybe just a touch more. But this is a lovely blade. And then you've got the retaining screw here. Uh, the mouth, again, as I said, you can adjust the mouth forwards. It's also got the depth uh, adjustment there. There is no left and right. There is no twist the blade this way. There just isn't. Um, I think the Veritas low angle does have that, but you're paying the dollars extra for these features. So on the front here, you release the knob a little bit, and then you can have the plane go, the mouth go forwards. Come on. It does go forwards, I'll tell you. <laughs> It's a little tightly at the moment. There we go. All right, so it was a little tight. So the mouth goes forwards and backwards via this. See how it just opened? You see my shirt through there? Close it back. Now, the reason we have a, a tight opening on a mouth instead of a large opening on a mouth is that as the plane is going along, it's wanting to lift. And so rather than it, than it actually start 
uh, creating a large splinter on a tear off if you bring the mouth in shallow small opening still gonna have enough opening for the shaving to come out but if you bring it in close that breaks the shaving that's what all of these see all those marks there that's from the opening that I had the mouth set at all right so I'm going to put it back together this is now with this one I got two blades because the other one I'm going to sharpen at a steeper angle so then this plane can also be used as a low angle and a standard so there's a tip honestly all you really need in your toolbox for planes is a five and a half low angle and a low angle block plane and two blades for each of those planes you know if things are tight go that way rather than have you know just thousands of planes so i don't would anyone own thousands of planes in kerry that 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 would be an illness i think so i'm going to put the blade back and i'll move this over here um always with a low angle the bevel is always up so this is a bevel up plane if you aren't aware of what that is well this side here is the bevel this is the the back of the blade this is the bevel so the bevel is on the upside as i put it into the body of the plane it slides down until on oh, this sorry this blade has also got a little notch here that this part of the depth adjustment wheel locks into that's what actually makes it move up and down now these are a little bit finicky sometimes i'll show you how much movement we've got left and right not a lot not a lot so they are finicky sometimes because when you put the lever cap in and tighten it up it makes it very hard to adjust the depth you have to release this a little bit and then adjust it and then sometimes you'll notice that if you've done that the blade may have shifted left or right in there which is going to be possibly a half a degree in travel so instead of being 90 degrees to the bottom here it's going to be maybe to, to the body i should say to the length of the sole it might be 89 and a half or, or 90 and a half you just got to work with it now i did say i was going to show you the mouth opening with the blade in there let's see if i can open it up like that you can see through to my shirt I'll do it this way so you can actually see it there open and slowly closing I want to bring it back so I've got around about two millimeters in front of the actual blade and that's it and I tighten up the, the handle the, the knob I should say at the front that's the clamp that locks it Uh, a small chamfering plane that's the one I use when I'm doing the um, wood ri uh, river wood river is it something I forget anyway there was anyone else who knows the plane that, I, that that gentleman's talking about I'll quickly get it out if I've got it here is this is this the little guy you're talking about it's got WR on it, so I think that's Wood River. Okay, so the up bevel acts as a chip breaker. No way. <clears throat> what happens is, if I had the bevel the other way around, well then, the the, be the top of the bevel would actually be contacting the timber. So instead of having a sharp cut like that, the blade would be doing this, bouncing, with the point up here. So it's just not going to work. <laughs> That's not gonna work. G'day Ricky, how are you? Yeah, so that's that's the little guy there. I'm pretty sure a spirit arrangement. That's an interesting, interesting name. How are we going for time, guys? 10 2. I've still got more to go. Hmm. It's a great little plane. I love it. Now, where was I up to? Uh, let me see if I've got that here as well. I love this thing. It's so, I'm so glad I didn't sell it. 
because I spent a long time developing it the way that I wanted it to. And I know there's a few people hanging out for videos on it and they will come, but I don't want to push John. John uh, does the plans for me. And so I'm going to wait till he's good, to, good enough to do plans while he's on dialysis uh, for six hours at a time. Perfect time for him to do some, uh, do some stuff for me in software CAD which I'm not very good at. Now, this little plane here, this little jab, sorry, this little hammer. Hello, I've lost something there, what's that? No, it's all good, it's all good, don't panic. <laughs> Sound is still good. Uh, so this little hammer here, thanks Andrew, is for adjusting the back of the blade if you don't want to release the tension on there at all. You can still tap it left or right. Just little tips. Things like that can make things a little bit easier for you. Uh, now, I was going to say that I was going to show you another way if you have the mag switch. So I'll flip the cameras around the other direction. We'll have a quick look at that again. Uh, evening all, Derek. Oh, good. Thanks, Derek, for putting in the link there. That's great. So let's go to the camera three again. Stumpy does have a lot of plants. I wonder how many of them he actually uses. All right, I'm going back over to that, that image over there. I'm going to turn this camera around again so that it actually can hear me. Very directional microphone on these things. Uh, that around there, and that should work. All right, I will take these clamps off. Yeah, as I say, be careful if you bring this out over here to clamp onto the rail. You can do that. I'll swing this around just a little bit. You can do that, but put a packer on here and under this so that as you're tightening the pressure up to pull it down tight, it's not going to have any force to try and lift this up and, and jiggy yourself up further down the track. The deep throat clamps aren't very cheap. I'll tell you that straight away. But when you need them, you need them. I saw that Matthias Wandel had uh, done a video on making them out of plywood. This one thing doesn't want to open. There we go, of course it does. And undo this one. So he's made some out of plywood, which is great. How, how good is that? I love these clamps. Alright, move that out of the way. And now we're going to bring in the next performer, which is this. This guy here is normally designed to work just in front of the blade. So don't put it there because you're going to start jamming timber against the blade as you're doing a cut. It's designed to go there. But this stuff being really flexible, it's not going to give me a good reference for the fence to push up against. So just spin it around. It's not, it's not hard. Uh, where are we? I'll get that piece of wood that I was working on. Hi Stephanie, how are you? And I'm going to drop that in there. Uh, what, the process again, for people that forgot, is I put that there, bring the fence up to it, and it tells me on the front here that I've got 113 millimeters from here to the blade. So 113. And I want three millimeters out on this side. That's close enough to 3.2. So let's say seven millimeters all up to allow for a little bit of sanding at the end from 113 is 116, I think. No, 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 it's uh, 126. I think it's 126. I can always test my mathematics by coming back to here. Coming back to it, I move that all out of the way. Uh, 116. Is that it? Yes, that's it. Were you all shouting at me saying, Dad, that's not right, that's wrong, that's wrong. <laughs> so again, put that there, bring the mag switch over and simply turn on the magnets. And then I've got my reference again. So we'll cut that, why not? And I'm not pushing any real weight against this, any force against that at all. I'm going to be, uh, 
I'm going to be pushing from here over onto that, and I want to make sure that I've got enough room there still. I do just dust extraction on, so there's going to be a little bit of noise. Turn this on. over a saw like that and that's that's very good advice don't reach over a saw blade i do have this guard on i'm extremely well protected i know there's a lot of people don't use these things i'll tip it down a little bit and to those people i say well it's, it's not my body you're putting in danger it's yours i know the, look, the only time that i would leave the guard off is if I am doing a dado or a slot. Uh, even then, I throw this in. This is a riving knife, and it stops the blade catching on anything. Uh, there really is no excuse for not using one of these. Uh, possibly one of the other applications is if I'm doing the cheeks of a tenon, but I'm using a tenoning jig, I'm keeping my hands right away. Everything's clamped into that jig, and it's riding on the minor slots in the top of the table. Alrighty, let's go back to the front camera again. Spin this one around. I think that's about right there. And switch the camera. There we go. All good, all good, all good. Now. Don't forget, next week, watch Cole's, Cole's Gift Guns Jig videos. He's doing them for free for you. Take advantage of it. The guy has got rocks in his head. <laughs> no, he hasn't. He's a lovely guy, and he's doing it as a community service and also to bring more aware, awareness to his jig, which is just magic. You've seen him demonstrate it on the show, and not too far, that out, not too far down the track, I'll be doing the same kind of thing. Uh, next week... Next week, what I think I might do is I might drag these plain blades out and give them a sharpen. I did chisels. Uh, I need to sharpen these blades so you guys can suffer along with, with me. No, it's not that hard. I'll, ba I'll do all the backs first and then we'll do the front. And uh, I'll do another couple of blades as well in the meantime, just to show you how sharp they can be and the difference in effort. You saw me when I was pushing the timber across, pushing the blade, not pushing the timber, you idiot, pushing the blade across. It, uh, I, was, I was having to work a little hard with it. When they're sharp, you don't have to work hard at all. All right, I think that's all for this week. Look after yourselves, be nice to each other. We're going to have a Patreon chat in a minute. And I think that's about it. I'll see every, when I put my glasses on so I can see. <laughs> Ah, there, 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 there. This one here. Look after yourselves again. As I say, be nice to each other. I'll see you next week. Bye. <laughs>